Good morning class and welcome to section 1.2 phases and classifications of matter. So what is matter? Matter is the stuff that makes up all things. It is anything that has mass and takes up space. So again matter is anything that has mass and takes up space and it makes up all living things. It makes up all things not just those that are living. Okay? Anything that has mass and takes up space. There are three common phases of matter, although there are other phases that we won't talk about. The three phases are solid, liquid, and gas. Solids are characterized by the fact that they have a definite shape and a definite volume, where volume is the amount of space that something takes up. Liquids, on the other hand, while they have a definite volume, have an indefinite shape, meaning they take on the shape of their container, but they take up a certain amount of space. Then we have gases. Gases are characterized by an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume. You can compress them and they take on the shape of their container. So let's talk mass versus weight. Mass is a measure of matter. It's a, ma a measure of how much stuff you have in your body, which is not location dependent. Weight, on the other hand, is the measure of the gravitational pull on your body, and that is location dependent. For example, if you travel to the moon, you will weigh less than you do on Earth. Okay, let's talk law of conservation of matter. The law of conservation of matter says that both before and after a chemical reaction, you should have the same amount of stuff. So brewing beer or baking a cake, when you're done, you'll have different chemical reactions having occurred, but you should still have the same amount of stuff. Okay, let's talk atoms versus molecules. Atoms are teeny tiny little particles that are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, with the protons and neutrons living in a central nucleus and the electrons hanging around outside the nucleus. Molecules are collections of atoms that are held together by bonds. So again, molecules are collections of atoms that are held together by bonds. Let's talk scale. One of the tiniest things you can see with the human eye unaided is a spider web. Now, if you were to take one single strand of that spider web and cut it so you could look down at a cross section, it would appear extraordinarily tiny. But atoms are even tinier. That tiny little cross section that you can hardly see is large enough to fit 7,000 carbon atoms across the diameter. So again, if you could line up atoms one by one, side by side, the distance across that cross section of spider web, you could fit 7,000 carbon atoms there. So again, atoms are so tiny that even with our most powerful of microscopes, we cannot see them today. So again, atoms, super tiny. Spider webs, also tiny. Okay, let's go back to matter. There are two broad classifications of matter. We have pure substances and mixtures. Okay, again, two classifications of matter, pure substances and mixtures. Now, each of those classifications can be further split into two. So pure substances can be split into two categories and mixtures can be split into two. The two categories of pure substances are elements and compounds. Elements and compounds. Elements are made up of atoms. You may be familiar with the periodic table which lists all of the elements in the world that are known right now. The difference between each element is the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons present. So again, elements are made up of atoms, which are comprised of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The number of protons, neutrons, and electrons tells you which element you're dealing with. Our second category of pure substances are our compounds. Compounds are our molecules, like water, for example. Water is a molecule with two hydrogen atoms bonded to a central oxygen atom. And water is a compound and it is two hydrogen atoms bonded to an oxygen atom. If you were to break that water down further into its elements, it would no longer have the property of water. That is why water is a pure substance. So again, pure substances, think molecules. We also have two categories of mixtures. Okay, we have homogeneous and heterogeneous. 
homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homo means same. Hetero means different. So a homogeneous mixture is a mixture with the same the same composition throughout. You cannot see any differences with the naked eye. Think Gatorade. A heterogeneous mixture, on the other hand, has regions of difference, hence the word hetero, which means different. So think oil and vinegar or oil and water. If you put oil and vinegar on the counter, like in salad dressing, it will separate out over time and you will see regions of difference. So again, heterogeneous mixtures have regions of difference. Homogeneous mixtures do not. Let's talk about cell phones, which are all over the place these days. Well, cell phones contain many of the things that we've been talking about. They contain elements. They contain compounds.